Hey guys, good evening and welcome to my exciting channel. We're discussing Mandela effects of the like. Thanks for joining me tonight. Welcome all Mandela Effectings. Hey, so uh, thanks for making it with me all the way to part seven. Uh, if you've seen the previous episodes, we are talking about what we're talking about here is we are talking about the the search for certainty. Okay, in God's holy word, um, it is a quest to find truth. Okay, truth and meaning in the scriptures, and that all of this. Everything that's going on has been, in the world, has been predicted by this book right here, okay? So uh, let's go ahead on to part seven. Uh, this part is called, Good God, Bad World, Why? Okay? So, as we look at our world, it is a world in trouble, a world consumed with war, famine, and poverty, a world writhing in sickness, disease, and sorrow. From these conditions springs one of life's basic question, questions. What is the origin of the suffering, sickness, and death so, um, so prevalent in our world? Why do the good as well as the bad suffer? Why are there birth defects and cancer? Why do earthquakes, famine, and tornadoes cause thousands of innocent victims to die? Who is behind violence and war? These questions will not go away by attempting to ignore them. They demand an answer. We should add in there what, what is causing the Mandela effect. <laughs> um, so, question one. Is God the author of human suffering? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 3 and chapter 31 verse 3. My Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love, dot, dot, dot. With loving kindness, I have drawn you. Um, question two. Now, if God is not responsible for human suffering, where did it originate? Let's talk about that. If we open up Matthew the Bible to Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 28. My Bible says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Dot, dot, dot. So the servants of the owner, dot, 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 said, uh, dot, 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 sir, did you not sow? good seed in your field. How then does it have tares? He, he, said, he said to them, an enemy has done this. So if we look at question number three, who is the enemy? If we look at Matthew 13, verse 39, my Bible says the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Um, question four, where did this diabolical being come from? If we turn to Luke chapter 10 verse 18. My Bible says, And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Um, ver, uh, question 5. Did God create a devil? If we look at Ezekiel 28, 12 through 15. My Bible says, You were the, the seal of perfection. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Dot dot dot. You were the anointed cherub who who covers. I established you. You were on the the holy mountains or excuse me, the holy mountain of God. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. God created Lucifer a um I will say God created Satan, I guess, um, Lucifer, whatever, a, a beautiful, glorious angel, yet he gave him the capacity to choose. To remove the power of choice is to remove the power to love. Biblical love is not forced or coerced. It's, it springs from divine love. It can never be forced. Question six. What occurred in Satan's mind to lead to open rebellion. If we turn to Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14, my Bible says, How are, how are you fallen from heaven, 
O Lucifer, son of the morning. Dot, dot, dot. You have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Dot, dot, dot. I will, I will be like the Most High. Now, I will tell you that word Lucifer may be an insert. The, uh, the actual word was Hallel in Hebrew, and Hallel means to howl. So I am curious about that one. Um, Satan desired God's power and authority. Thus, he attempted to set up a rival government. Um, if we look at question seven, okay, what did this open rebellion lead to, and what ultimately happened to Satan as a result? If we turn to Revelation 12, verse 7 through 9, my Bible says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Dot, dot, dot. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now every angel chose either the path of loyalty or rebellion. The same option is available to every human being. There are only two ways, the way of loyalty to God or the way of rebellion against God. Um, if we look at question 8, how did our world become involved in the conflict between good and evil? Romans 5 verse 12, my Bible says, therefore, uh, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Though deliberate disobedience, or excuse me, through, through deliberate disobedience, Adam, the head of the human family, opened a door God desired forever shut. His conscious choice to disobey acquired him, or excuse me, separated him from God, and this resulted in death. Our world was not created as a uh, dumping off place for Satan. It was created perfect. If we look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, uh, it says here, Through sin, Adam's dominion was forfeited. But we must not lay all of the responsibility for sin upon our first parents. The Apostle Paul writes, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Thus we live on a planet in rebellion. Question 9. As a result of man's fall, what does Satan now uh, claim in as his? If we look at Luke 4 verse 5 and 6, my Bible says, Then the devil dot, 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 showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and, and their glory. For this has been delivered in, to me, and I give it to you, or excuse me, I give it to whomever I wish. The um, Question 10. What has God done to redeem this planet that has yielded to Satan's temptations? If we look at John 3.16, also 1 Peter 1.18 and 19, my Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have its everlasting life. Dot, dot, dot. You were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold. Dot, dot, dot. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. With a heart of an inexhaustible, infinite love, God decided to pay the price of sin himself, Jesus Christ. The eternal Son of God came to this uh, sin-cursed world. He entered into the arena of human affairs to redeem us from the curse of sin. Um, question 11. What is Satan's ultimate fate? Ezekiel 28, verse 16 through 19. My Bible says, You became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, Dot, dot, dot. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your, you corrupted your wisdom. Dot, dot, dot. Therefore, I brought fire from your uh, midst. It, it devoured you and turned you into ashes upon the earth. Dot, dot, dot. You have become a horror 
and shall be no more forever. Satan is soon to be defeated and destroyed. Through Calvary's cross, that's Christ on the cross, um, he has been proven a liar. God is love. The principles of his government will ensure the happiness of his creatures throughout all eternity. You can be on the winning side. Um, why not tell Jesus, Lord, I choose to stand with you and accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I invite you to enter my life as my king. Question 12. What will God continually do with this planet? If we turn to 2 Peter 3, verse 10 and 13, my Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come, dot, 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 the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up, dot, dot, dot. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven, new heavens, it says. My decision, I accept Jesus as my Savior and surrender my life to Him. I desire Him to rule in the kingdom of my heart. I choose Jesus as Master of my life. And that is the end of Part 7, guys. And uh, journey with me. We're going to go into Part 8. Thank you very much, and God bless.